So today on Project Shop, I'm gonna mount this 100 ton cylinder on this 55 ton press. This was the original cylinder and I blew the seals, then I damaged the ring up in here and then the cylinder wall got rusty and it was pretty much done after that. But this was pretty interesting how this was made. So this thing was actually welded right to this base and then there was a aluminum thing that went down in here and it had seals on it and then the pressure came in here threaded into the aluminum but then this thing here um, sat upside down in this tray and this tray was bolted up right here with these these screw holes on the side here so what I'm gonna attempt to do is utilize this plate and bolt this to it because this thing actually has let me show you this thing actually has uh threaded screws on the bottom the only problem the only problem i'm going to have is these are four inch on center these are five inch on center so what I'm going to do is find the center of this, you know, scribe some lines and then get my marks off of there, see what it's going to look like and just see if I can't get this up in that machine without having to physically weld it to it. Now, obviously sticking a 100 ton cylinder in a 55 ton press is not the smartest idea, but I do have a bunch of I-beam that I got that I am going to actually wrap this thing with. So I was looking at this press and as big as all this stuff is, if you look right here where this opening, now this opening is so you can stick some bars through or whatever and press it. Um, this is the weakest link. This is the smallest portion of metal, right? So this little bit of metal right here, doubled, will hold 55 tons. So me sticking an I-beam, basically what I'm gonna do is weld the I-beam right down in here and as you can see, I had bought two things that were almost like a W. See, we cut the I-beam off there, left it welded over here. And what we're gonna do is cut this to size and then weld this one to, to the side of that, slip it down in there, and then weld the whole thing up. So it should, in theory, double the capacity of this thing but we are gonna have to make some modifications. One, I'm gonna have to cut this webbing out, okay? So that that I-beam sits flush down here. And then once the I-beam is in there, I'll weld some braces across the top so this doesn't, you know, get out of control. But even with me cutting the webbing out, it's not really doing nothing because I'm not gonna affect none of this. I'm just gonna cut it here, you know, like this. Cut that notch out, cut this completely out. And then, and then notch that, and then put some more weld on there. And this thing should be twice as strong now. Now the only thing I haven't solved is how I'm gonna reinforce this carriage down here. So I'm not sure if when this thing was running, if they used just one pin for the 55 ton, or if they put the pin underneath, because they line up, you can put two pins in here. And what I'm thinking is, I can't really build the inside up because I would have to have the beam go through here to catch that pin. Whatever I reinforce this with has to be able to catch these pins out here. So I was thinking about taking this plate off, maybe welding a whole like half inch plate on the inside of both of those and then put this plate back on there. There's really not a lot of room on the inside um, to sneak a plate in there. But what I might have to do is separate all this and probably weld the plates on the inside and make this just a little bit wider. I don't know, I haven't gotten that far yet, but I got uh, three pieces of I-beam left that I can cut up and utilize for that, or I'll just take some half inch plate and make strips and weld it on there and then bore the holes. And then I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna bore the holes in that I-beam because every one of these holes need to go all the way through. So, and that pin needs to catch that I-beam, otherwise the I-beam really ain't you know, ain't doing that much. But we'll get to that when we get there. For now, I wanna to try to get this thing up in here and 
I need to do some modifications here. I need to cut these tabs off, I, I believe, and cut this out of here because this was originally for the 55 ton. I'm gonna have to figure out a way of attaching it because this actually swivels. This is for jacking uneven loads. You can put a pin, you know, so your load don't slide or whatever. Um, the cool thing is this thing moves. Now, when I'm pressing, I can't have it up. Um, so it has to be down. So I'm gonna have to uh, somehow slip something under there, like a keeper, you know, so that it actually pulls this back up. And I think I'm gonna do it two ways. One, I'm gonna make like a something that slides in that I can, you know, lock into that thing and catch two sides or three sides of this, or, you know. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld a piece of this here and thread it. Come in and squeeze this with some um, some bolts. And then there's one thing that kind of concerned me. I looked down in that hole, probably can't tell, but it almost looked like there was some scores on the actual push cylinder, um, which could tear up the seals. Now, I, I never bench tested this thing yet. I did pay like 800 bucks for it. So if it's trash, I'm gonna be kind of a little bit upset, but I do have a hydraulic guy that rebuilds cylinders, so it won't be a big deal getting it fixed. So for now, we're gonna see about getting some bolts for this, getting this bolted to that plate, getting that thing bolted up there and see if we can't get this cylinder mounted. Okay, I got all the pieces marked out. It was uh, four and an eighth on center. So our holes are just a little bit in from what we had here. Too bad we couldn't just use them holes, but it is what it is. Now I'm gonna take this over to the drill press, get this set up. We're gonna drill the hole for the bolt and I'm gonna oversize it just a little bit because it really doesn't matter. So I'm gonna get it set up to uh, drill those holes right there. And then um, I'm gonna actually countersink them a little bit to the depth of that head. And then we should be ready to mount this thing. Okay, so I got everything set up. I couldn't get this thing in the actual vise, so I just clamped it to the top of it.
Okay, I'm almost there, but the issue I'm having is um, I'm not going to be able to get a socket on here, and I don't have a bigger drill bit than one inch. So I might have to use a hole saw and see if I can't open this up a bit. Perfect. Now I just need to do that three more times. Okay, that was a little tedious. It actually took four steps. I drilled a small little pilot hole. Then I drilled a 7 8 hole. I countersunk it with a one inch bit. I didn't have anything big enough to uh, drill out to countersink it enough to where I could actually get a wrench or a socket on there. So I had to take the hole saw and drill it out. Now. I probably could have just used the hole saw right off the bat to countersink or, or drill out what I had to do and drill the pilot hole, but the bit I had on there wasn't that good and uh, it wasn't too bad just swapping out that bit. So I think this turned out good. Now let's see if uh, our measurements line up. Oh man, this thing is heavier than it looks. I think the shipping weight on this was like 80 pounds or something. Okay. We got one in. Two, three, moment of truth. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. We have an issue. It's hard to see down in there. Okay, let's try this again. I just took the drill and ran it down in there. And I'll tell you what, it seemed like there was a burr in there that might have, it might have just been a burr. Hopefully. Oh yeah, is that it?
I got it all plumbed up. I had to fix the switch. But this is the first time I'm gonna try this cylinder. Oh, it's moving. Yeah. Now it's moving real slow. Probably a lot of air in there. I think my other pump will push this a lot faster. Oh, that's it. Oh, we got a leak. Uh, all right, that's interesting. All right, let me see if I can't tighten that up a little bit. Okay, I think we got a problem. Oh yeah, all right. We definitely got an issue with this side here. Okay, after playing musical fittings and swapping some stuff around, uh, I found another one of these, but made out of brass. I don't know what the PSI rating is on it, but we're not really gonna be pushing too much. Um, and then when I backed this out, I noticed it was bent. So I don't know if the threads uh, got messed up or if it's cracked, but it was coming out of there uh, with no pressure. So hopefully when you mess up the threads on there, that'll really suck. Probably have to drill it out and retap it with some, um, with a bigger thread. But to do that, I would have to take the whole cylinder apart so no shavings got inside. So we don't want to get into that, but let's see. Oh, much better. Okay. That is slow going. But, I think with my other pump, it'll go a lot quicker. That's it. Oh, she's building pressure now. Wow. I can't believe how short of a stroke that thing has. It's my tape measure. Let me just verify this again. Yeah, we only got like a seven inch stroke. Um, that's not gonna do too well for what we need, but it'll split that. Our blade is only we basically got about nine inches of usable blade. Oh, did that cylinder come down some? See, that thing's hanging down. See that? So, I don't necessarily see that being an issue. Um, but we're gonna have to lock onto this thing somehow. And I'm, a, I'm gonna assume that's probably hardened, hardened steel. So drilling into it uh, to put a pin is probably out of the question. I'm gonna have to make some type of like uh, fork that slides in there, but it's, it can only be that thin because when this pushes up, you know, with a hundred tons, you know, the bottom of this is what needs to be, uh, you know, we can't have this thing wobbling around. I wish I could just take this out of there. I don't know how to get that out and put something else in there that's not a swivel head. I mean, it's pretty cool. You know, it's made for jacking stuff up on a, a swivel, but 
Uh, we don't need that while we're going. But I'm super stoked about this setup now. This thing looks beast mode with that giant cylinder in there. <laughs> Look at the difference. This used to be in there. <laughs> so the next step is going to be cutting this off. And I need to cut probably I need this all the way down onto that plate. So I'll probably have to cut a lot of this out. And this was just here for, um, I was gonna have spring returns because this was only single acting. It would only push, but it utilized this plate and these springs to suck that ram back up. Well, this one, I need to suck this whole heavy thing back up so originally I was gonna put those back on there but if you notice here and here I had drilled holes I was gonna have more springs um, but I ain't gonna need that because this thing's double acting it's gonna pick itself back up we just need more flow this one doesn't flow that fast my other machine flows really fast so we'll bring that over here next see what type of uh, cycle times we can get I'll, do, I'll time it, see how fast we can go all the way out and all the way back in, because ultimately that's going to determine how many stators we can do an hour. You know what I'm saying? So we need, we need this thing cranked up. I think I'm going to have to invest in a bigger uh, pump, like a big boy one. But we're definitely one step closer to cracking transformers. Now, I got this sitting on the ground because I'm not exactly sure how... I'm going to modify this. I had a kind of clamped up here for a minute and I was going to put the legs on there, but I, I'm thinking I'm going to have to cut this up and then put plates, weld, weld plates on the inside or, or something. I don't know, but this needs to be reinforced before I put the legs on it. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do it. It's kind of all up in the air. I'm just using what I got. But I know that whatever I do, I have to double whatever's there to get to the 100 tons. You know, this is a 55 ton. So if we double it, theoretically, it should be 110 tons. And since we only got a 100 ton cylinder, we'll be 10 tons in the safety zone. You know what I'm saying? If you have any suggestions or ideas, uh, feel free to leave a comment. I'm always open to suggestions, and I look forward to reading the comments, but I think that's going to be it for me tonight. It's like 1.30 in the morning. So if you come this far, thanks for watching. Stay tuned, because we're one step closer to cracking some big old motors. <laughs>